Hey everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down a beginner-friendly version of the Beatles classic, Let It Be. Now, I'm gonna be showing it to you in the key of G. However, it can easily be put back into the original key of C just by putting a capo here on the fifth fret. Let's get started. In times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Oh, let it be, let it be. Okay, we have a close look at the neck. I'm going to start off by showing you the basic chord progression that goes into this song. What we have here is a 1, 5, 6, 4 progression in the key of G. So, those numbers are being drawn from the major scale. Everything in music is in reference to that major scale. So, if I look at my first note of the scale, G major scale, I have a G. So that means my first chord will be G major. Moving on, if I look at the fifth note of the scale, G, A, B, C, D, there it is. The next chord will be D major, the 1 5 progression. The next chord we have is the 6, minor 6, G, A, B, C, D, E. So E minor is in the key of G. And then finally we have the 4 chord, 1 5 6 4, G, A, B, C. So there's my root of the C chord. And now I have a full 1 5 6 four progression. G, D major, E minor, and C. So those roots are being drawn from the major scale in G. And not only that, but the notes that exist within the chords are also found in that scale. So if you were to pick apart all those chords and look and see what notes are inside them, you'd find that they all exist within the major scale in the key of G, meaning that they all have the same tonal center and they'll all sound fantastic uh, with each other. All right, so for the beginners out there, I'm gonna break apart all those chords and show you where your fingers belong. That G major chord, my third finger is here on the third fret of the low E string. My 
My middle finger is there on the second fret of the A string. And my pinky is here on the high E string third fret. This can be an uncomfortable position for a lot of beginners, but it's totally worth getting down. It's a very useful um, version of the G major chord. Moving on to the D major chord, I have a little peace sign shape. My first finger here on the second fret of the G string, my middle finger on the high E string second fret, and my third finger here on the third fret of the B string. So I have a peace sign to a triangle shape. Strumming from my D string down. All right, the next chord we have is E minor, very easy shape, I call it my rock on position. My middle finger is here on the second fret of the A string, while my third finger is below that on the second fret of the E string. So I have strumming from E to E, every single string. And then finally, the C major chord, my third finger goes here on the C note, the root, third fret of the A string. My middle finger is here on the second fret of the D string, and my first finger is here on the first fret of the B string. So I have C major strumming from the A string down. G, D, E, C. Okay, now taking a look at the actual chord progressions, there's only two sections to the song, the verse and the chorus, and some walk downs and walk ups in between. Getting started with the verse chord progression, it's all stock in the beginning, G. D, E minor, C. But the mark of a good songwriter is that he or she is able to take something that's been done over and over again, a stock chord progression, and make it more interesting and new again. So the second time around, Paul is going to omit the E minor, the minor six chord, go right to the four, and then back to the one chord, G major. So our full verse chord progression is G, D major, E minor, C major, back to the G chord, to the D chord, and then to the C chord, and back to the G. For the beginners out there, you can just strum each of those chords two times each. So we'll have one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. But once you have that down, you can start to kind of get a little bit more adventurous with your strumming patterns and throw in a lot of eighth notes and 16th note flourishes just to make it a little bit more powerful. So the strumming pattern that I like to use when I'm going through my verses is like this. I'm doing there over the G chord, down, 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 up. Switch chords, down, 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 up. E minor, down, 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 up. And to the C, down, 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 up. Now I'm being very careful to strum from the appropriate string downward, and then on my upstrokes I'm keeping it very light, basically attacking just the treble strings, G, B, and high E. Okay, with some simple strumming, let's give that verse a try. We'll start off with the first verse. One, two, three, four. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Okay, good, now that we have that down, we can throw in a gospel style walk down. We're gonna do it at the very end of the verse where he says, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Right there, in between the C and G chords that end our verses. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna strum the C major chord once, pluck the A string second fret, then the open string A, and strum the G chord. So that will sound like this. One more time. All right, now in context. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Here we go. C, two, O, G. 
and I'll do that for each of my verses. Okay, now that we have our verses down, we can move on to our chorus sections. Now this is gonna be very similar to the verse, but he's starting on the minor six chord. So that is E, E minor. All right, the chord progression for this uh, section, we have E minor to the five chord, D major, to the C major chord, to the G. G major repeats, to the D major chord, and to a C, and we walk to our G major. So one more time, two beats each, E minor, D chord, C major, G, G again, to the D chord, and C major, walk to the G. Alright, let's give that a try together. Ready? One, two, three. Let it be. Let it be, let it be, oh, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Okay, so we have two easy chord progressions down, our verse and our chorus, and also our short gospel style walk down. Now, the last step, we're gonna add in the extended walk down. This is a section that sounds like this. One time real slow. So all we're doing there is we're strumming our C major chord, playing the same thing that we did in the short walk. Two, zero on the A string and a strum of the G chord. And then from there, we're gonna play the first fret of the low E string then play open, strum the D major chord, strum the C major chord, and strum our G major chord. So one more time, C major, two zero on the A string, strum of the G major chord, one zero on the low E, D major chord, C major chord, and a strum of the G. Paul McCartney does this twice before he goes into the, uh, the guitar solo, where George takes the guitar solo, and also at the end of the tune. So I like to use this right at the very end of the tune, and I kind of slow it down just to let the audience know that the song is coming to a close. So it might sound like this. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Short walk, then follow up. The extended. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this quick beginner lesson on Let It Be by The Beatles. I got plenty more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe and please share. I'm Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy beginning.